Hey friends, Gavin Syme here. Welcome to the show. And I, well, I just recently got out of Mexican jail. Was it as horrible as they say? Actually, what I want to do is get straight to the video. I'm okay, but I hate this kind of stuff. Despite people thinking that I always like to fight with cops, I actually don't like fighting. I'm just tired of government and police and people in uniforms violating the rights of people all over the world, whether it's in the United States or Mexico or Palestine or wherever you go, I'm sick and tired of people being treated like slaves. And that's why I think we need to stand up for ourselves. I'm just going to play the video first and then I'll come back after. That way you can watch it uninterrupted. I took the time to put English subtitles all the way through. So those of you that don't speak Spanish understand what's going on. Let's roll tape. Quieres extorsionar me? tengo dinero para darte a ti. Ah, sí, pues dámelo. ¿Tú tienes identificación? No, identificación no. Tuya. No, you have to give identification for la... 43 de México Federal, tu identificación. Ah, ok. Pero el vehículo es tuyo. Sí. Ok, tus placas son falsas. No. Necesito saber uh, por qué traes esas placas. Esos. Sí. La sí. gente se roban las placas. Tengo la original. Pero esos son la de plástico. No, oh, pero ¿por qué haces eso? Porque la gente se roban oh, las placas. Sí, sí, sí. O la... Traer la placa original. No, porque se roban. Es un delito. No, eso, eso no es delito. Documentos falsos. No, no, no. Entonces, ¿por qué traes esas placas falsas? No son falsas. Son eso. No, las que traes tú para circular. Porque la gente steal them. Eh. They steal them. ¿Es qué? Todavía no me muestras uh, identificación. ¿Cómo se llama tú? Ulises García. Tu identificación, por favor. ¿Para qué quieres mi Porque es la ley. ¿Por qué? Es delito. ¿Cuál es delito? Por tú. No. Mm. Ya me estoy identificando contigo. Ley 43. Ya te estoy haciendo saber el por no. qué. No. Your identification real. Necesito que... Necesito tu identificación. Tu identificación, amigo. Uh, necesito que te identifiques o alguna... Tu primera. O tu algo. primera es la no, ley. No, yo soy la autoridad. Yo te no, tú no eres autoridad. Tú no, eres... Estamos jugando, ¿no? O sea... Es... No, no es un juego. Le, ¿Cómo se llama? 43 de la Seguridad Nacional. You tienes que darme tu identificación. Mm, tu tarjeta es en la ley. La ley no es una discusión. ¿Tú no entiendes? La ley, la, la, la ley es, es muy clear. Sí. ¿Pero qué quieres? Yo quiero tu identificación real por contabilidad. Porque me estás molestando. Me estás acosando. ¿Qué si es delito? No, no Porque es delito. Es como si trajera placas falsas. Mm -mm, no es en placas falsas. Si quieres, infraccionarme. Pero, ¿cómo necesitan 20? Hay tanto delincuencia en San Juan. ¿Y tienes cuánto? 20 policía. Hay asesinados. Hay, ¿cómo se llama? Ladrones. Toda la policía de San Juan está aquí. Él comete delito cuando no, no identifican oficialmente. Eso es delito federal. Artículo 3, capítulo 3, artículo 200, 234. Uso de documentación falsos o alterados. Al que haga uso de documentos falsos. No es esta ley por placas. Para obtener no, eso no, no es. Este es un documento. No, hay una otra ley sobre las placas. No, no es un delito. No, eso es mentira. Bueno, eso es mentira. Yo has visto la ley. Soy mentiroso entonces. Sí, eres. Fácil, pues. Intento de ser amable, pero mi estás... también somos amables. Y te, te show, te y muestra. Te respeto. No, nadie, nadie te ha faltado. Mi falta de respeto porque es un delito que no se identifica. Entonces él también comete un delito federal. Uh -huh. Porque no identifica. Vamos a llevar él a la fiscalía porque yo quiero denunciar también. ¿Por qué quieres llevar él a la fiscalía? Yo a la fiscalía, pero él no, cuando él comete un delito federal. <risa> Espérame. Ya, ya, ya. Ya, 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 amigo, ya te dimos mucho chance. Oye, oye. Sí, la verdad, ya te dimos mucho chance. Estamos hablando. No, ya, ya es mucho chance, la verdad. Bájale no, el vehículo. Bájale el vehículo. Asegúrenlo, vamos a ponerlo a disposición de la fiscalía. Ya, ya estuvo. Es mucho chance lo que se le está dando. Es mucho, mucho hablar. Ya se lo explicó. Ya, de favor, señorita, descienda del vehículo también. De la misma manera se lo pido atentamente. Descienda del vehículo. Mija, van a revisar el vehículo, por favor, en presencia de que todos tengan... Ya lo comenté, ya lo platiqué con el comandante, con el encargado del área. 
y me dice que ahorita se va a dar a la tarea de buscar el vehículo, de corroborar qué oficiales lo remitieron y por qué motivo no han traído aquí la papelería. Ah, no, identificación no. Tuya. Ya, 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 tú. ya, ya, amigo. Bájate. Ya, amigo. Bájate. Ya te dimos mucho chance. Oye, oye. Sí, la verdad. Ah, no, identificación no. Tuya. After being in jail for a few hours, what actually happened? And here, speaking of Mexican jails, obviously these vary. Obviously, cops abuse people here. Uh, normally, as I've told you before, you can you can stand up for yourself. Now, certainly, I would have been charged with more for the same discussion in the U.S. No law was being broken. In fact, here's the actual law for plates. Let me make it simpler. I've just translated it. So if we're being official, right, Article 9, you have to have your vehicle registered. It has to have a plate on the front and back and a sticker on the window. And there needs to be a registration card. All of those things were present. What they didn't like, I've often put, and I've told you guys before, I'll make a laminated copy of my plates and keep the original inside the car because when when they write a parking ticket or something, they steal your plate and they use that to make you come and pay faster so you can get your plate back. So I'm like, screw that. You're not stealing my plate. It works fine and no one knows the difference. But here's where I went wrong and I've been telling myself for weeks to fix this, the back plate was faded. So it, it drew attention. And that is the only reason that he stopped to harass me because he figured he could get a quick buck out of it. And it's certainly not a crime. If anything, it's just like a like a, a ticket, right? But I can't even find in the law where it's that because a copy is not a forgery, obviously. If you make a copy of your driver's license, you're not forging a driver's license. It's a copy of the real thing. And what they were trying to throw at me was that I could go to jail for six months or a year because it was forgery. They were using the law that would be used if you were fabricating registrations, driver's license, uh, outside the official authority, which is actually just the government extortioners that want to get your money for buying those but that's that's another discussion i had the real documents everything was in order this guy this cop this idiot just didn't like it that he couldn't get a bribe from me. and you could see that from the beginning like he was laughing nervously and mocking me when i said oh you just want to extort me he was actually pissed because i wasn't licking his boots and offering him a bribe and i had it all on camera and he couldn't try and get me to do that Always try and avoid, never let them search your car. You have a right in Mexico as well, under Article 16 of the Mexican Constitution. They cannot s just search your car. You don't have to give them permission to search your car. When you lock it from the inside, it, the, the handle didn't lock. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the settings and see what's going on, because what happened is he reached in the window. I should have had it up a little higher. So I made a couple rookie mistakes there, because frankly, I, I, I hardly ever get pulled over down here. And I don't go out of my way. I don't try to be an activist in Mexico because people look at me as the foreigner. And quite frankly, when I publish videos like this, I get a lot of I get a lot of racist comments like you're a foreigner. You don't belong here. Honestly, the same thing that I see people in the States doing to Mexicans when police abuse them, doing to Guatemalans, doing to people of of other colors and nationalities when police try to abuse them and they try to stand up for themselves. And I see people saying, oh, they don't belong here. This is America. They have to respect our rules. The simps down here do the same thing on, on Facebook. Now, in general, there's, there's not the same police worship. Most people that you talk to and that see the video are like, wow, that's too aggressive because that's why I was trying to be calm, right? I would argue a lot harder in the US, but they very much have a culture here of you're not supposed to insult each other. You're not supposed to say rude things in public, stuff like that. That doesn't actually make anything better. It doesn't bring more justice. That's the culture here and that's what they expect. And so I do actually try to adapt to the culture here. A lot of people would just run from the cops here because it's it's not really that considered that big of a deal. But my other passengers that were in the car, I was in town, there was a lot of police by that point. It wouldn't have been safe and it just would have escalated it and they would have made me look like the bad guy. Better to let them show the criminals they are, show that they have no respect for the law of identification, for articles 16, for articles 11, for article 21. They broke so many laws in the course of this and committed all these crimes and supposedly I'm the bad guy because, well, you didn't, you, you had copies of your plates. Yeah. Okay. That's not a crime. I can't even find where that's a finable offense, but it's certainly not a crime. And it's certainly not something that is justifiable to arrest someone for, haul them out of their car, violate the right to search, et cetera, 
et cetera. They took my car and then to top it off, you want another crime? They didn't file the paperwork. That's what you see at the end. It took me like two days to figure out where the car was. And my insurance agent actually saw me in the street going to the county offices and he's like, hey, what's up? He started calling around for me to friends and, and impound yards to find my car. So my insurance agent actually found the car for me. Right, that's like a little extra service there from the insurance agent. So shout out to you, Jacob, um, and to everyone else who showed up, to Mauricio and Julie and my parents and the rest of my family that showed up to help. So people were showing up and asking about me almost immediately. That always helps. And within a few hours, I sat up there. They they harassed me. They asked me questions. They tried to make me believe I was a criminal. Then they took me down to the jails. The jails were more like a jail that you would see in the 70s in the U.S. People say the jails are like the worst of the worst. Jails in the U.S. are awful. I think it's, it's human trafficking and abuse to lock someone in concrete cages for any length of time, other than just a very short period of time. That said, there was no security that you went through when you went in there. It was just like a big hallway with a row of cells and like open air windows with bars on them uh, that looking into the hallway. I was actually probably only there for an hour. The jailers were jerks. They were making fun of the people coming in and stuff like that. So it was the typical uh, the typical low class disrespect. So they like to act like they're respectful. You didn't obey the law. You didn't respect. But really, as usual, as when you sit in a jail in the States and you watch people feed in, it's the cops that beat them up. It's the cops that broke the law. It's the cops that didn't respect them 90% of the time. They have to let you go if they don't charge you after 48 hours. Technically, it's supposed to be 36 hours, but they say 48. And most things they, they don't charge you for. It's not like in the States where anytime you get arrested, they're going to find a charge and you have to spend months in court. But within an hour, they were actually down there and, and the jailer was laughing and making fun of every of all the prosecutors and saying, hey, they want to see you. They're all freaking out because uh, of who you are. They're afraid you're going to call the embassy. And I told him, I, I don't want to talk to the embassy. I'm, I'm a refugee from the United States. So I went upstairs. I talked to the public defender. They did actually give me a public defender. And she was pretty helpful, to be honest. I mean, you got to take public defenders with a grain of salt. They get their paycheck from the same government as the prosecutor. All right. But it took me a couple days to get my car back. And when we finally did find it, I had to go. They didn't have any fine. They gave me no paperwork, no receipt. There was nothing filed, another, another violation. And what happens is when the police can't extort you, they look for a reason to take your car if you let them. Because why? Because the tow truck companies give the police bribes to let them take the cars. Look at all these stolen rigs that they extort people for. Finally at the yard, they extorted me for over 5,000 pesos, nearly $300. Obviously, that's not the going rate. The going rate to tow a car here would be like uh, like 100 bucks, right? So it's just pure extortion, and they give a bribe to the police to help them do this. Much like in the States, but here, it's actually illegal to do that. It's all under the table, right? In the States, it's part of the system that they get to screw you over, and then some of it goes back to the government, etc. Tow truck drivers that work with police and government are car thieves. I didn't pay anything to get out of jail. There was no charges, no nothing. They just later, they didn't have any paperwork. Finally, they made up, when I went there, I'm like, I need my car back. Where's my car? You stole my car. We don't know where the car is. Uh, we'll check and see. Give us a little time. We'll try and find it. Then they kind of threw the documents together. They said, we'll just pay this traffic fine of $75, and here's your paper to get your car out, but then ended up paying another. So I ended up paying in total probably about 400 bucks. And uh, yeah, if you wanna if you wanna back the channel or throw a throw a super chat in there, I'm I'm cool with that. To help pay for these crooks. Um, I'm talking to some lawyers here about it to see about suing them and, and going further. But I just I just get tired of crap everywhere. This is the first time something like this has happened in five years living in Mexico. The first time I've ever got a ticket. The first time that they've ever taken me out of my car. Sure, I've dealt with jerk police before. So I have to say that in general. I haven't had a lot of problems. I hate being in jail, but the jail cell was actually two beds, bigger than these solitary jail cells they like to stick you in in the States, uh, a bathroom behind a wall, a toilet behind a little stubby wall. I mean, it sucked, but it was a jail, right? Thank the Lord I didn't have to stay there very long because I hate jails and, and he knows that, but it's not okay. It's not okay. And I'm sick and tired of them abusing and extorting people down here in this way as well. The Mexican police are robbing 
the towns and the people of Mexico. They're robbing the poor, and it needs to stop. People need to stop saying law, law, law. The people breaking the law are the police. They're thieves, they're extortioners, they're criminals. And it's time we started treating them as such. Okay, that's all for now. I'll do a live stream on this to do more Q&A and talk to you guys more about it. I wanted to keep this pretty short and sweet. I got arrested in Mexico. I'm out. I don't have any charges. I'm just, I'm just kind of pissed off. Take care, guys. Love your neighbor.